Welcome to Red Eye. Hello, everyone. I am Tom Shalou. Let's check in with TV's Andy Levy at the Red Eye Tease Deck. Andy. Thanks, Tom. Coming up on the big show, President Trump's executive order on immigration sparks protests at airports across the country. I can't believe people are ruining the usually fabulous air travel experience. <laughs> Plus, a new ad shows uh, the iconic character Mr. Clean as a house cleaning sex object. Oh, I hope there's no Mrs. Clean. <laughs> and finally, Masaya Nakamura, the man known as the father of Pac-Man, passes away at the age of 91. There's no official cause of death, but authorities say they do consider Clyde to be a ghost of interest. <laughs> Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Andy. Let's welcome our guests. Give her a call and she'll get you off. Criminal defense attorney, Remy Spencer. <laughs> I'm suddenly reminded I need to wash my clothes. Good thing I have his abs. <laughs> TV personality and panelist on Wet Paint TV's The T, John Baysdow. He's a sage. Now, where'd I put the rosemary, parsley, and thyme? Freethink Media executive producer and co-host of the fifth column podcast, Camille Foster. And I'd keep telling him to use a razor, but I'm scared he'd use it on his arm. <laughs> How, why can I say, I can't do that anymore if I have hair on my face. Man, these were dark. Sitting, Constitution, <laughs> suicide. Sitting next to me, comedian Dave Smith. Oof. Okay, let's start the show. Donald Trump's immigration ban has sparked enormous backlash in parts of the country. Over the weekend, protesters swarmed airports where immigrants had been detained. And on Monday, during Sean Spicer's daily press briefing, People watching on Facebook Live responded with a barrage of frowny faces. Wow. <laughs> While coastal cities are melting down, Trump voters in the heartland have shrugged off the uproar. A Missouri woman told Reuters, somebody has to stand up, be the grown-up, and see what we can do better to check on people coming in. I'm all for everybody to stop and take a breath. Just give it a chance. And a retiree in Alabama forgave the new administration for a few glitches, adding, I'm not opposed to immigrants. I just want to make sure they're safe to come in. On Monday, the president defended his order, noting on Twitter, big problems at airports were caused by Delta computer outage. Protesters and the tears of Senator Schumer. If the ban were announced with a one-week notice, the bad would rush into our country that week. A lot of bad dudes out there. That's right. There are, right, Dave? Why did you put dudes in quotes like that, do you think? That, because, <laughs> I guess because they don't even really party that much. Like, I guess dudes, if you even call them that, yeah. they don't even watch football. But he was saying that dudes are, uh, you know, there's bad dudes out there. That's why we have to, you know, it's extreme vetting. It's what he promised. Why is everyone so surprised, Dave? Well, I guess that's a fair point. I mean, it's actually kind of a... a pulled back version of what he promised mm. right so i guess it, I, no one should be that surprised but uh yeah there are bad dudes out there that's nothing new there's always been a lot of bad people out there yeah uh so i mean uh, camille I, I bet you would agree he he said you know what was it he first said he said something more remember donald, when he read that I, statement? donald trump am going to institute a total shutdown on all muslims entering the country until that's we right. can figure out what the hell is going on that's right that's a direct quote that's a direct quote I'm not mistaken uh, uh, so I, I actually thought some people would be really disappointed that this was happening because this is not what he promised he some promised of the people to something much further reaching yeah um look there's mm -hmm. always good reason for skepticism and for pushing back when the state does something. If people are being detained, you want to know that they are doing it in accordance with the laws of the land, that there is oversight and all that other good stuff. Um, what is not always good, however, is exaggerating the extent to which this is the worst possible thing that has ever happened in human history. Yep. And there is a hell of a lot of that going on right now. And um, there are definitely constitutional questions yeah. that need to be had, uh, conversations about the Constitution that ought to be had. There are conversations about oversight and sort of executive overreach that ought to be had. Yeah. But most of the stuff that's happening right now is just infuriating. Wait can a just minute. Quickly, can I just quickly add, you as, can. Someone, as someone who's very anti-war, it's pretty crazy to me that this is the straw that's like broken the back of everyone's outrage. Like you would think detaining, detaining an, an Iraqi at the airport is maybe the nicest thing that our federal government has done to an Iraqi in the last 25 years. <laughs> oh, okay. well, okay. look. We have literally, we have murdured the mil, well over a million Iraqis in, in the last 25 You're talking about drone years. attacks and things like that, right? Sanctions, drone attacks, bombings, uh, you name it. Yes. Mm -hmm. we, we've, hundreds of thousands of Iraqis have been killed, so it's a little weird that this is where you choose to have all the outrage. Well, Although, I and also getting so much backlash. Go ahead, go ahead. Also 
getting so much backlash because you're talking about there are probably 50 Muslim countries uh, in the world. Yes. He's pinpointing seven. Seven that have been pinpointed in years past as also harboring, supporting, or fostering terrorists in some way. Yes. So this is something that he, number one, promised to do. It's also something that's, I mean, keeping America safe, like he always puts in his tweets, he yep. sticks on message constantly with make America safe. Um, so I don't understand why there's such a huge backlash and such hyperbolization of this whole issue oh, when he's doing me, what he said. Let well, me try and answer that. Yes, Remy, yeah, but look, I may. Uh, it, there is in some parts of the country, but like I said in my read, that some parts of the country, they said, hey, this seems like common sense to me. What about you? Well, I think there are a couple of really important issues. Number one, people, um, there have been a lot of national security experts who've come out on this fine network today who've said that this law that's being done in this executive order, I should say, mm -hmm. which was written in an effort to make America safe again, is going to have the exact opposite effect. I mean, there's a number of reasons I've gone through. I'll get back to that. All right. Number we'll do that. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. And, and number two, I think the reason that this is the issue that everybody is sort of up in arms about is because it goes straight to the heart of what America stands for. Right. This country was built on religious freedoms and freedom from persecution and prosecution by the government so that we could... Uh, practice whatever religion we want. And we had Rudy Giuliani come on this network yesterday or over the weekend who said Donald Trump wanted a legal way to do something that was illegal. And most Americans agree that we want to keep this country safe. Everybody agrees that we should secure the borders. How we go about it mm -hmm. is the question. And the biggest problem I think a lot of people have is that this isn't about making America safe. This isn't about keeping the bad guys out. It's about delivering on a campaign promise. And, there's, there's and that's politics, pure and simple. But I think, I mean, look, we have, there's, we have a refugee program, right? Uh -huh. We cut it off somewhere. Sometimes we cap it here. Sometimes we cap it here. Right. But for the next here. few months, it's capped here at zero, right? This is, this so we're true, allowed to also, decide who comes in the country, yes, right? Yes, yes. And the president has a great deal of latitude in the way that he goes about that. And quite frankly, so far as my understanding, I'm not a lawyer, but I've looked at the executive order. I've actually bothered to read it because it's not I'd like deciphering That qualifies ACA. you. You're a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I play one on TV sometimes. Um, but there is something to be said for the rhetoric that the president and when he was a candidate in particular used when he talks about this and when you say a total shutdown on, on Muslims entering the country yeah even if the executive order that you pass doesn't single out a religion and say we are banning people of a particular mm -hmm. religious faith the fact of the matter is the way that you talk about yes. these laws matters and yes that can impact the way people interpret these the, the, not the law in this particular case but an executive order but the way that people will talk about this has everything to do with the way you've pr pr um, promoted it so Certainly, the way the president has sold this particular initiative is highly problematic. What is also really problematic, however, is hyperbolic, ex over, over the top, and inconsistent and often hypocritical uh, agitation on the part of people from the outside. I know when you go to the airport because you heard something awful has happened and you get involved, I don't go to JFK unless I'm leaving. Yeah. I sure as hell wouldn't go there to participate in protests. <laughs> um, I know you mean well. I get it. And I understand. I think most people mean well. I, I also don't think most people are paying very close attention to what the hell is going on here. It almost seems sure like the country is divided. Hmm. Mm. Trump's immigration order has caused slight travel difficulties for some travelers. But Kellyanne Conway says that a, that's a small price to pay for security. Here's the counselor to the President Trump on Fox News. You're talking about 325,000 people from overseas came into this country just yesterday through our airports. That's 325,000. You're talking about 300 and some who have been detained or are prevented from gaining access to an aircraft in their home countries and must stay for now. That's 1%. And I think in terms of the upside being greater protection of our borders, of our people, it's a small price to pay. But... Is the immigration order making us safer? Former CIA director Michael Hayden says it has inarguably made us less safe. It has taken draconian measures against a threat that was hyped. The byproduct is it feeds the Islamic militant narrative and makes it harder for our allies to side with us. Hayden, who didn't support Trump during the election, has made similar comments in the past. That's true. He's an anti-Trump guy, uh, Remy. But I want to ask you about this because you brought that up before. Um, I like Kellyanne Conway's argument. She said it's what? It's 100, 100 some odd people? It's a very small percentage, so it's not a ban on Muslims. Well, she explained what it is. 
Right? I, I think what it, her quote was something like, it's a small price to pay to make America safe again. Yes. And I don't think that's an argument. That's a soundbite. <laughs> and it's a really effective soundbite. Um, but we have experts, not politically motivated. We don't have... Um, Hayden's politically motivated. Experts can be politically no. motivated. Yes, they, they can be politically motivated. But are. I don't think that it's a political statement when you say that you take an entire group of people or an entire class of people and you say, you're not welcome. But you said that twice. i got to stop you there. Pause. It's countries. It's not a class of people. It's not a group seven, of people. It's not a religion, countries. right? Right. So the seven countries, let's be really specific about it. The seven yeah. countries are the ones that were under President Obama's uh, exception to the visa waiver. Correct. Yeah. So you can come here and travel without a visa if you're from anywhere but these seven countries. Right. Um, none of these seven countries are responsible for sending over people who've committed any kinds of acts of terror. None of the actual terrorists who've been here and committed acts on this soil and killed Americans are on that list. So that further supports my position that this is politically motivated. This is not about uh, making America safe. We've got a 90-day stay, a 120-day stay, and an indefinite stay on Syrian refugees. Mm -hmm. If what we were talking about was making it diff more difficult, a more extensive vetting process for refugees, or those seeking political asylum um, had to go through more hoops to get that kind of classification, that come? would be an intelligent conversation. What this is, is let's just stop and see what happens. Well, Remy, don't, no, but don't wait, you think that's What's your come? question to, to Remy? Because what I was going to say was, with change comes complications, okay? So right now, he started it, he may not have done it with the complete uh, preparation like you would normally do. <laughs> but you have to see what's going on. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> it, it was a little bit crazy, it was a little bit crazy. But the thing is, change brings complications. You start with this, you move forward. But the, still the goal, That's true. the goal is going to be better. Because think of Obamacare. Obama, started, matters, off, Obama started off by saying that everyone was going to keep their doctor, well, everyone was going to keep totally their That's a totally different plan. topic. Yeah, but the thing is, I, is, know, I, like, I like bringing in that argument. No, That's good. Saying, no, 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 change, not the, bring, you're right, change, change brings complications. <laughs> I like that though. What's change. unprecedented about this is that this is not just it's not that it's just change. It's that he didn't follow any process. He didn't go to any experts. He didn't do anything to make the well, implementation well, fair. Well, let me ask Dave this question. Dave, he said because if he did that, the bad dudes would sneak into our country in a week. I mean, and you got to watch out for the bad dudes. I so, mean, is, so is that why, true? Well, I mean, there hasn't been a ban for the last eight years. I mean, why were they waiting till the announcement of the ban to stick? Did they not want to kill us that bad a few months ago or something? This is it. Really okay. is a fantasy land that you got that uh, these neocons live in. Well, when, in terms of the threat that they exaggerate. It, it is a threat that is completely caused by our, act, our military actions in the region. The only two groups who have ever posed a Com problem to America... Completely? Okay. But Dave, wait a minute. You're saying, saying, when you, I say the only, Trump, the yeah. Trump guys aren't neocons, are they? They're, they're, well, a lot of the people around Trump are neocons, Some and you're, you're quoting people... Look, well, I find, by the way, just amazing is the neocons now who have bought into the blowback philosophy and are actually saying that this could be used as a tool to uh, to uh, recruit people in the the terrorism you know region look i think if you want to look at what actually uh it recruits terrorists it's our presence the fact that we kill hundreds of thousands of people prop up brutal dictators and support israel that's the truth it's not because trump says mean words it's not because we're strict on immigration i think that is well i mean the the idea that you know when you're talking about uh, how to this is the 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 line that you've been hearing from mm -hmm. people is that this is going to cause more terrorists. We heard it from the former CIA director, right? But it isn't intervention in their countries what is causing terrorists, the not only terrorists, in some cases, protecting there are two, our border. There are two terrorist groups that have attacked us or inspired attacks against us, right? It's mm -hmm. Al-Qaeda and it's ISIS. This isn't really all of, all of Islam. It's Al-Qaeda and it's ISIS. Both of those groups were funded, armed, and trained by the West. It's just a fact. In, if in you don't part. want to look into that, ignore it. In but part. it doesn't have to do. Camille, in yeah. part, yeah. That's Qualify the, his fair. statement a little, will you? He's well, an extremist. Well, <laughs> Are you I wouldn't, I wouldn't say this. I'm, I'm an extremist as well. <laughs> hey, can we talk about just the effectiveness of programs like this or the presumed effectiveness of programs like this? There is another government-run program that actually is run out of the airport. 100% uh, of Americans are subject to it, even if you got TSA pre-check like I do. 50% of the time when you go to the airport, very good chance you'll be fondled and it is not keeping you safer. It, they may even fondle your toddler and if they don't fondle you, they will force you to put your hands in the air like a criminal. It doesn't work. Camille. This is important and worth yeah. recognizing. I'm kind of jealous because I think they fondle you more than they fondle me. <laughs> this is true, they do. People are deleting the Uber app because drivers dared to pick up weary travelers. On Saturday, the New York City Taxi Drivers Union, whose membership is mostly Muslim, declared a strike to protest Trump's immigration ban and stopped picking up passengers at JFK.
That evening, Uber continued servicing riders and even announced via Twitter that they had turned off surge pricing at the airport. Now, some people viewed that as a strike-busting move. Mm. And a righteous social media campaign was born. Thousands deleted the app and posted evidence on Twitter and Facebook with the hashtag Delete Uber. The company said in a statement that their tweet wasn't meant to break up any strike. They just wanted people to know they could use Uber to get to and from JFK at normal prices. <laughs> Especially tonight, they added. Remy, uh, I think this was a clear case of hysteria. They created a story and it wasn't really true. They get mad at Uber for putting surge pricing on, and then so they to prevent the anger, they turned it off, and everyone thought it was some evil plan. Yeah, so you think the Twitter was misunderstood, misapplied, and people overreacted? They made it <laughs> political when it wasn't political? I yeah. mean, go figure. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know how... I'm reluctant to say I feel bad for Twitter, but I mean for Uber. Yeah. But um, I think this is a little bit. It got a little carried away. Yeah, John. They uh, did you see that Lyft mm -hmm. got into the act? They immediately came out and they, uh, you know, they made a statement of their own. They donated money to the ACLU. Yes. So really, I think this was the whole thing was a marketing game. Do you? Uh, I always say when you're looking for motive, follow the dollar. <laughs> Cut through the illusion <laughs> and follow the dollar. Okay. Bottom line with this situation is. You want it, you had the taxi organization trying to, they're being obliterated by Uber and stuff like that. So they're trying to put a little nail in their coffin, trying to knock them down a peg yeah. to get some business away. And then you have people setting the hashtags up and stuff like that on Twitter and saying they're not going to take Uber, deleting the raps and everything. I'd love to see a survey after the fact of how many of those people just reloaded that app right afterwards. Because look at all the celebrities that say, um, I'm going to stop on social media just so they can come back a few weeks later. Or yeah. the people that say, if my candidate doesn't win, I'm going to go to Canada. Nobody changed citizenship papers, though, did they? They did not. And you can't take Uber to Canada, I don't think. Um, uh, what do you think, Dave? What's, can you? I almost, I don't know. How far can you go? I don't with know Uber? if you can. But I you could. What do you libertarians are. think of Uber? You're probably pro Uber, right? Yeah, I think I think what Uber's done is is pretty amazing. I mean, uh, the the government had a monopoly on taxis for for quite a long time, and they were they were charging working class people up to a million dollars at one point for a medallion. I, I think it's pretty cool what Uber came in and, and provided all this employment and provided service. Look, if, when you get Libertarian, honestly, the take is this is voluntary. If you want to boycott a company, that's fine. You can boycott a company. It's just, again, like I was saying, where does your outrage go? All you liberals, you want to boycott something? You're wearing clothes made by Chinese kids. <laughs> Maybe stop buying all that stuff. I, I don't know. It's just a little weird when you choose Ubers what I won't, what I won't purchase anymore. Is that why their clothes are so small? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> People just want to be part of the game. Textbook, they want to be known. They want their opinion known. That's it. I don't, period. I don't know about that. Textbook definition no, of a do. combustible situation, however, is me coming home from a 13-hour flight, right, getting to JFK and discovering that, oh, my God, not only are there no cabs because they're on strike, I can't use Uber either. Yeah. This is a dangerous situation for everyone. What were they? Everyone. I mean, how were they helping protesters? The people, the protesters were generally anti-Uber, the and they can't get, yeah, yeah they're unless, stuck. Unless so. you live close by. Yeah. You see, they haven't thought this through. They haven't thought it through. What's new? Coming up, remember when coffee only came with sugar and cream? Now it's coffee with a side of liberal preaching after the break. News alert, I'm Matt Finn. President Trump firing acting Attorney General Sally Yates. It followed a memo in which she directed her staff not to defend Mr. Trump's executive order on immigration. In a statement, the White House says Yates, an Obama administration appointee, quote, betrayed the Department of Justice by refusing to enforce a legal order designed to protect U.S. citizens. But Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer is lashing out at the Trump administration, saying it won't make us safer. This resolution makes us less safe. It was poorly done in a slipshod, quick way that foretells real trouble in the White House. U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District of Virginia, Dana Bente, has been sworn in as the new acting attorney general. He's already directed the Justice Department to defend President Trump's executive order on immigration and refugees. Bente will serve as acting attorney general until the Senate confirms President Trump's pick for attorney general, Senator Jeff Sessions. A French Canadian has been charged in connection with Sunday's deadly attack on a Quebec City mosque. Alexandre Besante is accused of killing six people and injuring eight others. 
The Prime Minister of Canada calls the shooting rampage an act of terrorism against Muslims. The UN Security Council scheduled to hold a meeting Tuesday to address Iran's missile test over the weekend. The test was in defiance of a UN resolution that bars Iran from testing ballistic missiles. Newly confirmed U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Nikki Haley will attend the meeting, which is being held at the request of the United States. I'm Matt Finn. Now back to Red Eye. We are living in an unprecedented time, one in which we are witness to the conscience of our country and the promise of the American dream being called into question. Was this a politician speaking from the floor of the Senate? A speaker at a protest? No. It was Starbucks CEO <laughs> Howard Schultz in a letter to his partners, a.k.a. baristas. Schultz was denouncing President Trump and his immigration policy, and his very open letter went on to promise that Starbucks would hire 10,000 refugees over the next several years. This earned him praise and scorn from both sides of the political spectrum. Some people on Twitter were calling for a boycott. But Howard assured us, we are in business to inspire and nurture the human spirit, one person, one cup, and one neighborhood at a time. Mm. Whether that neighborhood is in a red state or a blue state, a Christian country or a Muslim country, a divided nation or a united nation. But Schultz can't deny that he has made a choice. Starbucks has basically become a liberal activist company. They openly support Democratic Party candidates, and they push progressive legislation, which is fine. But the reason Starbucks has always been profitable and has great growth is because it makes a product that people want and that they're willing to pay extra for. But that may not last forever. Look at this robot. It's from a company called Coffee X. And the X stands for X employee. They opened a cafe in San Francisco. The barista bot can make a latte in under a minute. And it's cheaper than Starbucks. And guess what? No preaching. Remy. Uh, look, this, uh, we all know where Schultz stands. I mean, he's pretty open. He's a political guy. Uh, he's very preachy. I don't like the idea of boycotting companies like this. I just say, and if you don't like Starbucks, you don't have to go there. But this outrage over him, it's the same as the left outrage over the Koch brothers, right or wrong? Yes, you're right. Mm -hmm. I think it's absurd. Um, first of all, most people need their coffee, right? Mm -hmm. If they don't get their coffee, no matter who it's coming from, they're miserable human beings. I can speak for myself without my cup in the morning. I'm just a terrible, mean, nasty person. What? Uh, <laughs> wow. The... The truth is, there are so many different options. If you don't like what the CEO says, go somewhere else. No one cares if you're offended by his personal opinion. Because he's the CEO, he's got a platform, he's got a, a louder audience than the average person on Twitter. But he's got a right to his opinion, and you have a right to free market. Go buy, you know, yeah. Dunkin' Donuts if you want. Well, I got sure. a question. Yes. No, I was just going to say, like, what's the logical conclusion of all this stuff? Like, do I have to, every time I go into Wendy's, be like, oh, okay, so where were you on the Iraq war? Uh, <laughs> exactly. Uh, exactly. Like, I mean, I just, a, at a certain point, you're like, guys, we all coexist together. We all work together in the market. We have a lot Lots of different beliefs. Uh, it's just, it's kind of crazy hysteria. Again, like a libertarian, I'm fine with boycotting something. Like you said, choose, don't go to Starbucks if you want right. to, but you got to pick your battles to some degree. Yeah. Well, look, I think, John, I think in, in today's world, it's almost like you do have to choose sides because there are people, for instance, the anti-Trump crowd, they really want to know where everyone stands because they don't want to have anything to do with any company <laughs> that even has a meeting with Trump. So I, I feel like on the left, uh, you know, they feel like they have to come out and be preachy, like Schultz. Just because people want you to pick a side doesn't mean you have to pick a side. When I go to a business or I go to have Starbucks or I go to a coffee place, I agree with what David said. I don't want to be bothered about my political <laughs> beliefs at all. I want to be left alone and enjoy my coffee, like <laughs> Remy said. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. That's the whole thing. You don't have to put politics into everything, and I think a lot of people do it once again to get the spotlight on them because mm -hmm. they know it's a hot button issue. So a company that wants to raise profits, a company that wants to move product, all of a sudden says, I'm going to tweet and pick one side, and I know somebody's going to come and get my product. Yeah. And they want to get that spotlight on them. Once they have the spotlight, they'll do anything they can to keep it with more and more tweets. Yes. Uh, Camille, here's why I think it's unwise. Because Starbucks 
is th they had their start in the urban, the upscale market, you know, the left-wing crowd. But they need to grow now, and they need to get out in the heartland, and that's where nobody likes Starbucks. Do you ever go out there? They don't like Starbucks. I didn't, I didn't know that. All they I know don't is like I have them. four Starbucks, like a constellation of <laughs> yes. Starbucks yeah. on my block. But they're in every so, city, right? Yeah, it's, and it's, generally, they're in liberal areas, but they, they, they want to grow not only... Uh, you know, across the country, but all around the world. And I feel like it's a mistake to align themselves completely with the Democrats. Am I wrong? Well, well look, I don't think creating uh, 10,000, 11,000 jobs for Syrian refugees and saying that they could work here if they came should alienate anyone. Look, the refugee crisis is terrible and awful. Mm -hmm. There are four and a half, four, uh, almost five million people who've been displaced by this conflict. 10,000 is a drop in the bucket. That isn't enough. Um, I think, however, if you're going to be outraged by this, and you should, the fact that we aren't taking in more of these people, despite the fact that we have a direct hand in making these conflicts worse in many cases. Um, you should have been upset when the Obama administration was letting in maybe a dozen people from yeah. these parts of the world before. That was like that 2012. That was the case. That wasn't yeah. so long ago. It's just a couple years ago. We yeah. let in 12. We didn't say anything. The Syrian civil go. war has been going on since 2011. Okay, we I, let I, go. I just, I just one question. What you said, I agree 100% with what you just said. Um, I think it's an awesome uh, project to get involved in. But my question is math-wise. Mm -hmm. If you're giving 10,000 jobs to refugees, are you taking them away from Americans? That's or are you it. creating 10,000 more? Are they going to displace? They're going to be Starbucks baristas and refugees. Starbucks, you know gets, to care. Starbucks okay. gets to do what they you want. That's an important answer, point. That's important. Coming up, important. halftime of TV's Andy Levy. Welcome back. Time to find out what we got wrong and what we missed from TV's Andy Levy at the Red Eye News Deck. Hey, Andy. Hey, Tom. How are you? Good. Excellent. Uh, let's get right to immigration, shall we? Mm. Such a fun topic. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do enjoy that the heartland is fine with this. It's like the places where Muslims don't settle are all for them being banned. <laughs> and the places where they do settle are fine, don't like the ban. <laughs> kind of weird. Uh, Camille, you said there's always a good reason for pushing back when the state does something. Yeah, especially when the state doesn't even seem to know exactly what it's supposed to be doing, sure. like the way this was rolled out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Although the, the general principle I was getting at was skepticism is always appropriate. Yes, speak oh, truth agree, yeah. to power. Yeah. Just do it consistently, yes, damn it. absolutely. Uh, all the journalists who are super excited now that Donald Trump is in office, where were you eight years yeah, ago? absolutely. You should have been doing your job all the way along. Yep. Yeah. Come on. Yep. <laughs> Uh, John, you noted that Trump has pinpointed the uh, seven countries that harbor and foster terrorists. Okay, well, so why not add Saudi Arabia, you know, the country whose citizens actually did attack us? Uh, they're also, he's basically, pin, he's basically piggybacking on what previous administrations right. have done and didn't really add a lot to it. But once again, TV's Andy Levy, like I said, with change comes complications and comes continuation. So that's something that could be looked at moving forward. Although this is not particularly complicated. You make the decision, <laughs> you make the decision because yeah. the United States is really great about being an to totalitarian regimes that don't matter to us and are small and easy to deal with. Right. And we're really good at giving yeah. folks a pass when they're big and important and have great economies. Yeah. And, or at I least think, have stuff we want, like oil. I think the money is the key there. Yeah, yeah. and isn't yeah. it inconsistent that now they're relying on the Obama administration's designation of these seven countries? <laughs> yeah. I mean, doesn't anyone else see the hypocrisy in that? No. Mm. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Remy, you said this issue goes straight to the heart of what America stands for. Yeah, I think the biggest problem here is, is the Syrian, it's the refugees. And Tom, you said we're allowed to decide who comes into the country, which is true. Mm -hmm. But if the point of this is to make America safer, refugees are the least of the problem. Refugees get vetted up the yin-yang. They have to register with the UN, they have to be interviewed by the UN, they have to be granted refugee status, then they have to apply for resettlement in the United States, then they meet with the State Department, then they get background checks. This goes on. It usually takes years for them to be able to come here. Yeah, Andy, I think you're saying, let's be real about what the threat is yeah. to this country. Yeah. Because it's not the family with little kids who spent four years getting vetted and then were turned away this past weekend when they landed in JFK. They're not the threat to this country. Right. Also be real about what the status quo was. Almost no one was coming in from Syria. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, that's true. Almost no one until last year. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. By the way, with Trump, with these, between bad hombre, bad dudes, and nasty women, <laughs> is he maybe trying out new Axe body spray scents? <laughs> yes. I think maybe that's what's going yes, on here. there you go. Uh, I like Matterhorn. Matterhorn, that's my, that's my scent. Is it, Tom, you said you like Kellyanne Conway's argument that this only affects a few people, so it's a small price to pay. Yes. This, this 
is the logic liberals use to try to get rid of guns. <laughs> <laughs> this, is a, this is the whole, but if it saves just one life. That was literally what President Obama said about, some, about putting people's names on a watch list yeah. and denying them guns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course, there's, if we just wanted to like maybe save one person's life, there's lots of laws we could pass that we don't even think of. We could make a 15 mile per hour speed limit. We yeah. could you know, institute like you know, Nerf cars. How about a 24-hour curfew? Yeah. Huh? A 24-hour curfew. curfew. No one can leave their houses. Sure. If you don't care about <laughs> violating some people's right. individual liberties, you can make the world a much safer place. Yeah. Except then it usually gets less safe. Yeah. If no one talks about a bowl full of poison Skittles or something like that, <laughs> yeah, it's something like very that. sad. Yeah. Yeah. Very sad. <laughs> uh, Remy, you said none of the terrorists who have committed acts of terror on American soil are for, from those seven countries, which is completely true. Really, you'd want to look at Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Saudi Arabia if, if that's your goal there. You also, again, you don't want to look, it's not refugees. Honestly, the biggest problem we have is asylees and the children of asylees. That's right. Absolutely. And if we were going to have a real intelligent discussion about making America safe again, then talk about making the vetting process more complicated or more thorough with not just refugees, but with anyone seeking asylum or residency in this country. But just saying, we're going to press pause because I think that's what Kelly Conway said today. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just, we're going to consider this order just a, a pause and we're going to see what happens. Yeah. Th that's ineffective. Yeah. I it's agree. useless. Yep. All right. Uh, the delete Uber thing. John, you said the motivation here is really the taxi people trying to take down Uber. I don't think you're wrong about that. Here's the New York Taxi Drivers Union saying on Sunday, this is the day after all of this, they put out a statement saying, uh, make no mistake, the corporations leading the gig economy will never be part of the resistance. Let's hold Uber and every single corporation accountable for its greed at all cost complicity in this inhumane policy and every such policy that follows. They're using this, like you said, as just an excuse to attack Uber. Mm -hmm. I think and, and it's right like David that. going against Goliath with different results. Yeah. I am really upset, though. None of you brought up the biggest problem with this Uber story. I'm particularly disappointed uh, in Camille and Dave, the two libertarians on the panel. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so Uber eliminated their surge pricing, and people got mad, saying, oh, they're trying to break the strike. The purpose of surge yeah. pricing is to increase supply. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you increase the price, it incentivizes more drivers to go to the airport. By eliminating surge pricing, you decrease the supply of drivers. That's a weird way to try to break a strike. No, you're, abs you're absolutely right. But this is, uh, it, it's like if you, uh, if you raise prices, they'll accuse you of predatory pricing. Right. If you lower prices, they accuse you of undercutting. You know, and if you have prices exactly the same, they'll accuse you of colluding with everybody. Right. Like, no matter what you do, there can always be. No, it's a very good point. And also, uh, you know, they may surge price at times. The old answer from yellow cabs was you just couldn't get a cab when it was raining. Right, exactly. There was just no option. Yeah. At least now you have the option. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, and just lastly, on the Starbucks stuff, uh, Remy, you said if you don't like what the CEO says, go somewhere else. Yes. Isn't that the point of the boycott movement? Yes, but... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. Just keep your mouth shut. Just go get your coffee elsewhere. Okay. Just be happy. Yeah. Uh, Dave, you said, where does this end? It doesn't end, man. Everything is only going to get more and more politicized. We know that, right? Yeah, it seems. I mean, this is all this outrage is clearly politicized, like we talked about before. But the number of bombs Obama dropped, the number of people he deported, it's just hard to take the outrage seriously when yeah. you didn't care last week. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, so, yeah, you're right. Yeah. And uh, lastly, John, you said just because people want you to pick a side doesn't mean you have to pick a side. Correct. Yeah, I'm sorry it does. <laughs> <laughs> Don't succumb to peer pressure, no, TV's Andy no, Weeby. No, Don't you succumb to. to peer pressure. You, you got to do aside. you, boo. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. Coming up, Mr. Clean Gets Dirty. The sexy new hero of house cleaning is next. Mr. Clean just got even sexier. A new commercial set to air during the Super Bowl will have many women asking him, is there a Mrs. Clean? <laughs> <laughs> the new sexy Mr. Clean was inspired by a real person seen here. <laughs> and if you're wondering about Mr. Clean's backstory, here's a glimpse. No one can say for certain where he came from, but they're certain he was born to clean. Child labor. Good. I watched all two and a half hours of that film about Mr. Clean's life. It's an eye-opening experience. Remy, 
What? I don't know which one of those was weirder. <laughs> I know. <Yeah. laughs> exactly. That second one was super creepy, wasn't it? His story is that he just showed up a cleaning baby on a random <laughs> <laughs> a couple of He was a disturbing yeah. element to that. <laughs> oh, oh, look at this baby. He likes to work. Disturbing. Well, I guess just Camille's let him clean reaction everything. was child labor. Mine was, oh, he was adopted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so true. Uh, but uh, let's talk about Mr. Cl sexy Mr. Clean. Mm. I mean, is this going to turn women on, Remy? <laughs> 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 I gotta be honest now I'm getting older I've dated a couple of men in my life I don't think any one of them is actually ever cleaned. I don't think I've ever seen a man cleaning and honestly I'm not sure if that would do it for me I don't really? think so well that's John I'm trying to yeah. picture if this were reversed mm -hmm. if a commercial featured a guy and he was looking at this hot woman mm -hmm. and then when he snapped out of it it was his not hot wife I mean that would be offensive <laughs> wouldn't it <laughs> well nothing screams sexy like cleaning the kitchen floor, re regardless of anything. But um, yeah. this commercial, I have to say, Tom, it's a little disturbing to me. I mean, I, first of all, with Mr. Clean, I did not exactly see where he came from. I do not know how he got in the house. Did he spontaneously <laughs> generate? I mean, I do not know where he came from. This is the type of commercial that makes me sleep with a bat under my bed. <laughs> it's a nightmare. Camille, I want to know, now, in the context of the commercial, hmm. she was in the shower with Mr. Clean, she was in the kitchen. Was her husband in all those places, or did she fantasize about Mr. Clean wherever she goes? No, no, no. She, she's filthy. Uh, she's <laughs> disgusting and disgraceful. She's a married Nasty woman. woman. She's yes. a married woman, and uh, all of this lusting after a cartoon, problematic, mm. reminds me of who framed Roger Rabbit and Jessica Rabbit. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, well, the, actually, that was hot. That See, I like her. She was pretty cartoon. hot. Yeah, I didn't find yeah. her creepy. But, uh, Dave, yeah. um, I don't know. I feel like this is, I don't feel like the aesthetic is uh, heterosexual. Do you agree with me on that? I don't well, feel like a, this was a was woman. a female woman and a male Mr. Clean. Yeah, but I, I don't mean, think the people who thought up this campaign, I don't think it was. This came from gay guys. I think so. That's well, right. here, I'll back you up on this. Uh, Mr. Clean had a great ass in that commercial. <laughs> that has gay guy written yeah, all over it. That's, yeah. um, that's a rock star ass. Why, why the white with the cleaning? I, he's, well, he's white. Mr. Clean is he wears all white. That's his thing. I guess so. It's a it's a little bit strange to sexualize Mr. Clean. Like I never thought that was the idea of him. Was like that's what. But now that you look at it, it's like I guess he's kind of like a big muscly guy. Was that the idea all the time? I like, think it your was. Your wife wants to bang Mr. Clean. Yes, I think that's what it was. He was like he was a fantasy. John, to, yeah. from a physical standpoint. Okay. I mean, he's well conditioned, right? I mean, does he? Could he? <laughs> he's got the low body fat going. Yes, but could he's he? He's got the defined musculature going on. But, but, but do, is it just from cleaning, or did he have to do extra stuff to the, get that way? The way? thing is this. This is what I do not like. It is false advertising. You cannot get a body like that by cleaning the kitchen, by cleaning <laughs> the, the dining room, by cleaning anything. He... This man is at the gym all the time. He is doing this on the side because he cannot get a real job because he's always training. So he's oh, got okay, to go to women's house. we got to go. <laughs> Coming up, the fond farewell to the father of Pac-Man. The father of Pac-Man, Masaya Nakamura, has died at the age of 91. Now he he rests in heaven alongside his brothers, Inky, oh. Pinky, Pinky, and Clyde. Nakamura founded Namco, the video game company responsible for developing Pac-Man, as well as Galaga, Dig Dug, and Pole Position. Pac-Man holds the Guinness Book of uh, the Guinness Book record for most successful coin-operated arcade machine. It's been played over 10 billion times. That's like 10 billion dollars divided by four. Mm. The game was so successful, it was spawned a Saturday morning cartoon, a breakfast cereal, a terrible hit song, and even a, an even worse Adam Sandler film. Did you see that Adam Sandler film, Remy? No, I did not. Which mm. one is that? Pixels? It was, uh, yeah. yeah, Pixels, I think it was called. It was recent, though. But uh, Pac-Man, uh, you, uh, you're too young to remember no, the Pac-Man days. Thank you for that. That's very nice. But uh, yeah, I had the, uh, what was uh, the birthday party, the video game yes. place. I forget, I'm forgetting my words right now. But yeah, Mrs. Pac-Man or Ms. Pac-Man. Ms. Pac-Man. Yes. She was an early feminist. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Same <laughs> game. I loved that game. Yes, he was, he was a great man and it was a great game. John, uh, I loved Galaga. Mm -hmm. uh, very hard to play, though. The trackball used to give me uh, carpal tunnel syndrome. Mm -hmm. uh, what were your games when you were a young man? Uh, gotta love the Frogger. Frogger, yes. yes. Getting that frog across the street 
goals. That's goals right there. <laughs> exactly. It's very, it's, uh, it's motivating. Uh, Camille, uh, you know, I think we, uh, we all respect the man. Mm. Uh, we're sad to see him go, but I think he, I mean, you know, if you could, if you can leave this body of work for people, I think it's, uh, he's, you know, it's a wonderful thing. Kind of, sort of. I mean, not to, look, what? it's sad. You dead. You died. Like, That's bad. But, I mean, seriously, like, video games are so much better now. Look how lame that was. Wait a minute! Like, chasing the little thing around. That, no, that's iconic. He should have worked Pac harder. Pac he should have worked harder. He yes. should have done better. I mean, come on. Zelda and all the other great things that came after. Super Mario Brothers? That is boring. We that's love Simple for Pac the win. Sorry. Simple for Slam. the win. Yes, simple for the win. What do you think, Dave Smith? I haven't heard a word anyone saying. This is the most distracting thing ever, but this guy's <laughs> crushing it at Pac-Man. Right? Oh, dude! Oh. He was... I'm sorry, what were you saying? Yeah, uh, 2017, we've already lost Mary Tyler Moore and Pac-Man guy. Oh, So oh I no. guess it's just not... We're uh, going to start that again. Just like 2016, people... I, I thought after 2016, people were just going to stop dying. No. Yeah, it's going to keep happening. But, you know, God bless you, man. Very special thanks. Remy Spencer, John Baisdow, Camille Foster, and Dave Smith. That does it for me. I want to thank you for joining us here on Red Eye with Tom Shalou. I'm your host. My name is Tom Shalou. <laughs> <laughs>
more. Remember Donald, when he read that I, statement? Donald Trump am going to institute a total shutdown on all Muslims entering the country until right. we can figure out what the hell is going on. That's right. That's a direct quote. That's a direct quote. I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh, so I, I actually thought some people would be really disappointed that this was happening because this is not what he promised. He some promised of the people. Something much further reaching. Yeah. Um, look, there's mm -hmm. always good reason for skepticism and for pushing back when the state does something. If people are being detained, you want to know that they are doing it in accordance with the laws of the land, that there is oversight and all that other good stuff. Um, what is not always good, however, is exaggerating the extent to which this is the worst possible thing that has ever happened in human history. Yep. And there is a hell of a lot of that going on right now. And I mean, there are definitely constitutional questions yeah. that need to be had, uh, conversations about the Constitution that ought to be had. There are conversations about oversight and sort of executive overreach that ought to be had. Yeah. But most of the stuff that's happening right now is just infuriating. Wait can a just minute. Quickly, can I just quickly add, you as, someone, as someone who's very anti-war, it's pretty crazy to me that this is the straw that's like broken the back of everyone's outrage. Like you would think detaining, detaining an, an Iraqi at the airport is maybe the nicest thing that our federal government has done to an Iraqi in the last 25 years. <laughs> oh, God. Okay? Well, look, we have literally, we have murdered the mil, well over a million Iraqis. In, you're in talking the last about drone years. attacks and things like that, right? Sanctions, drone attacks, bombings, uh, you name it. Yes. Mm -hmm. we, we've hundreds of thousands of Iraqis have been killed, so it's a little weird that this is where you choose to have all the outrage. Although, well, and also getting so much backlash. Go ahead, go ahead. Also jo getting so much backlash because you're talking about their probably 50 Muslim countries uh, in the world. Yes. He's pinpointing seven. Seven that have been pinpointed in years past as also harboring, supporting, or fostering terrorists in some way. Yes. So this is something that he, number one, promised to do. It's also something that's I mean, keeping America safe, like he always puts in his tweets, he yep. sticks on message constantly with make America safe. Um, so I don't understand why there's such a huge backlash and such hyperbolization of this whole issue Good when word. he's doing me, what he said. Let well, me try and answer that. Yes, Remy, but look, I may. Uh, there is in some parts of the country, but like I said in my read, that some parts of the country, they said, hey, this seems like common sense to me. What about you? Well, I think there are a couple of really important issues. Number one, people, um, there have been a lot of national security experts who've come out on this fine network today who've said that this law that's being done in this executive order, I should say, mm -hmm. which was written in an effort to make America safe again, is going to have the exact opposite effect. I mean, there's a number of reasons I've gone through. I'll get back to that. All right. Number, we'll do that. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. And, and number two, I think the reason that this is the issue that everybody is sort of up in arms about is because it goes straight to the heart of what America stands for. Right? This country was built on religious freedoms and freedom from persecution and prosecution by the government so that we could... Uh, practice whatever religion we want. And we had Rudy Giuliani come on this network yesterday or over the weekend who said Donald Trump wanted a legal way to do something that was illegal. And most Americans agree that we want to keep this country safe. Everybody agrees that we should secure the borders. How we go about it mm -hmm. is the question. And the biggest problem I think a lot of people have is that this isn't about making America safe. This isn't about keeping the bad guys out. It's about delivering on a campaign promise. And, there's, there's and that's politics, pure and simple. But I think, I mean, look, we have, there's, we have a refugee program, right? Uh -huh. We cut it off somewhere. Sometimes we cap it here. Sometimes we cap but it here. For the next here. few but months, it's capped here at zero, right? This is, this so we're true, allowed to decide who comes in the country, yes, right? Yes, And the president has a great deal of latitude in the way that he goes about that. And quite frankly, so far as my understanding, I'm not a lawyer, but I've looked at the executive order. I've actually bothered to read it because it's not I'd like deciphering That qualifies you. You're a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I play one on TV sometimes. Um, but there is something to be said for the rhetoric that the president and when he was a candidate in particular used when he talks about this. And when you say a total shutdown on, on Muslims entering the country, yeah, even if the executive order that you pass doesn't single out a religion and say we are banning people of a particular mm -hmm. religious faith, the fact of the matter is the way that you talk about yes. these laws matters. And yes, that can impact the way people interpret these, the, the, not the law in this particular case, but an executive order. But the way that people will talk about this has everything to do with the way you've pr pr um, promoted it. So certainly the way the president has sold this particular yes. initiative is highly problematic. What is also really problematic, however, is hyperbolic, ex over, over the top, and inconsistent and often hypocritical 
uh, agitation on the part of people from the outside. I know when you go to the airport because you heard something awful has happened and you get involved. I don't go to JFK unless I'm leaving. Yeah. I sure as hell wouldn't go there to participate in the protest. <laughs> um, I know you mean well. I get it. And I understand. I think most people mean well. I, I also don't think most people are paying very close attention to what the hell is going on here. It almost seems sure like the country is divided. Hmm. Mm. Trump's immigration order has caused slight travel difficulties for some travelers. But Kellyanne Conway says that a, that's a small price to pay for security. Here's the counselor to the President Trump on Fox News. You're talking about 325,000 people from overseas came into this country just yesterday through our airports. It's 325,000. You're talking about 300 and some who have been detained or are prevented from gaining access to an aircraft in their home countries and must stay for now. That's 1%. And I think in terms of the upside being greater protection of our borders, of our people, it's a small price to pay. But... Is the immigration order making us safer? Former CIA director Michael Hayden says it has inarguably made us less safe. It has taken draconian measures against a threat that was hyped. The byproduct is it feeds the Islamic militant narrative and makes it harder for our allies to side with us. Hayden, who didn't support Trump during the election, has made similar comments in the past. That's true. He's an anti-Trump guy, uh, Remy. But I want to ask you about this because you brought that up before. Um, I like Kellyanne Conway's argument. She said it's what? It's 100, 100 some odd people? It's a very small percentage, so it's not a ban on Muslims. Well, she explained what it is, right? I, I think what it, her quote was something like, it's a small price to pay to make America safe again. Yes. And I don't think that's an argument. That's a sound bite. And <laughs> it's a really effective sound bite. Um, but we have experts, not politically motivated. We don't have... Um, Hayden's politically motivated. Experts can be politically no. motivated. They can be politically motivated, Often but are. I don't think that it's a political statement when you say that you take an entire group of people or an entire class of people and you say, you're not welcome. But you said that or twice. i got to stop you there. Pause. It's countries. It's not a class of people. It's not a group seven, of people. It's not a religion, right? Right. So the seven countries, let's be really specific about it. The seven yeah. countries are the ones that were under President Obama's uh, exception to the visa waiver. Correct. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you can can come here and travel without a visa if you're from anywhere but these seven countries. Right. Um, none of these seven countries are responsible for sending over people who've committed any kinds of acts of terror. None of the actual terrorists who've been here and committed acts on this soil and killed Americans are on that list. So that further supports my position that this is politically motivated. This is not about uh, making America safe. We've got a 90-day stay, a 120-day stay, and an indefinite stay on Syrian refugees. Mm -hmm. If what we were talking about was making it dif more difficult, a more extensive vetting process for refugees, or those seeking political asylum, um, had to go through more hoops to get that kind of classification, that calm? would be an intelligent conversation. What this is, is let's just stop and see what happens. Well, Remy, don't, no, don't you think that's What's your come? question to, to Remy? Because what I was going to say was with change comes complications, okay? So right now, he started it. He may not have done it with the complete uh, preparation like you would normally do. But you have to see what's going to happen. Yeah, you know what I mean. It, it was a little bit crazy. It was a little bit crazy. But the thing is, change brings complications. You start with this, you move forward. But the, still, the goal. That's true. The goal is going to be better. Because think of Obama here. Obama, started, matters, off, Obama started off by saying that everyone was going to keep their doctor. Well, everyone was going to keep totally their plan. That's a totally different topic. Yeah, exactly. I, know, I like it, though. I through. like bringing in that argument. No, that's good. No, no. Change, no, not the, you're right. Change, change is, is complications. Complications. <laughs> I like